In the last lesson, we saw that the mass spectrum of many compounds contains a lot of peaks. And if it's a pure compound, such as pentane, why are we not just seeing a peak for the molecular ion? So that's the topic that we're going to take up in this lesson. So recall that the molecular ion is a radical cation, and I introduced that term in the last lesson. Remember that radical means unpaired electron somewhere, and cation means positive charge. So remember that also that the radical cation was generated by bombarding a stable molecule with high energy electrons. So the environment inside a mass spectrometer is a highly energized environment. So some radical cations are unstable enough under the high energy conditions that they fragment, giving rise to lower mass peaks in the mass spectrum. So here's a picture of the fragmentation process. So somewhere in your molecule, you have a carbon-carbon bond that's only got one electron in it. Could be a carbon-hydrogen bond, for the, but for the sake of argument here, we'll say it's a carbon-carbon bond. Remember, the second electron's been ejected. It can break. That electron's going to go on to one fragment. That fragment becomes the radical, and then the other fragment is left with the positive charge. This actually helps the situation because at first you had one fragment with two problems, so to speak. It had both an unpaired electron and a positive charge. Now we've taken the two psychological problems and split them apart so that one fragment only has to deal with the unpaired electron and the other fragment only has to deal with the positive charge. Okay, so sometimes fragmentation is extensive and sometimes fragmentation is not extensive. And I want you to look at these two mass spectra right next to each other. We have a mass spectrum of benzene and a mass spectrum of pentane. Both hydrocarbons, both about the same size. So benzene has a very large molecular ion at 78, which is its molecular mass. So what's going on here? Well, the intensity of a peak corresponds to how many ions of that mass reach the detector, which in turn corresponds to the relative stability of that fragment. And before I go further, I want to introduce one more term to you, and that is the base peak. The base peak is the peak of greatest intensity in the spectrum. So that can be a molecular ion or a fragment. In some cases where the molecular ion is unusually stable, such as benzene, it will be the base peak. The peak at 78 is by far the biggest in the mass spectrum of benzene. In many cases, such as pentane, the molecular ion will be quite small. Pentane's molecular mass is 72. There is clearly a peak there at 72. It's bigger than anything around it, but it is most definitely not the base peak. One of the fragments is the base peak, specifically the fragment at 43, and on the next slide we'll look at what that fragment is. What you may need to be able to do if you don't know the structure of a compound, though, is identify the molecular ion in a spectrum. And the general rule of thumb is the molecular ion is the highest mass peak with appreciable intensity. Okay, in both of these cases that is true. Yes, there is a peak with one mass greater than the molecular ion, and in the next lesson we'll talk about where that comes from. But in general, if you're just looking for a spectrum and need to identify the molecular ion, sometimes it's big, sometimes it's small, but it's still the highest mass peak with appreciable intensity. Okay, so let's look at pentane a little more and try to analyze the fragmentation. What are the fragments that we observe? Well, the molecular ion can fragment at each carbon-carbon bond. Okay, so depicted here, there, there are four carbon-carbon bonds in pentane, and depicted here are the four possible ways that it can fragment. You can have a butyl cation and a methyl radical, a propyl cation and an ethyl radical, an ethyl cation and a propyl radical, or a methyl cation and a butyl radical. Now note that only ions are observed in the mass spectrometer. So each fragmentation event, while it may generate two fragments, only the fragment 
highlighted in green is observed in the mass spectrum. So each fragmentation event generates only one observable peak. So let's look at the spectrum in more detail. So the spectrum of pentane has, as we saw, the molecular ion at 72. It has an M minus 15 peak at 57. It has an M minus 29 peak at 43. That's the base peak. It has an M minus 43 peak at 29. And finally, it has an M minus 57 peak at 15. So what you might notice is, in addition to the molecular ion, the 15 and 57 peaks are also relatively small compared to the 29 and 43 peaks. And that's because the molecule would prefer to fragment between carbon 2 and carbon 3, or between carbon 3 and carbon 4, depending on, on which way you look at it. And that's because we've already discussed how methyl cations are incredibly unstable, and methyl radicals are also unstable for the same reason. They're not quite as electron deficient as methyl cations, but they're still electron deficient having seven electrons around the carbon instead of eight. So the low abundance of the 15 and 57 peaks are due to this instability and the decreased probability that the molecule is going to fragment in either the first way or the last way, and the higher abundance of the 29 and 43 peaks is due to the fact that the molecule is more likely going to fragment through one of the two metal carbon-carbon bonds. Okay, in the next lesson, we will talk about the other reason why you sometimes have multiple peaks in a spectrum, and that is the presence of isotopes.